All right, guys, welcome to what I'm going to call a long-term review of the Ruger 2245 Lite. This is a 22 long rifle handgun. This is one that I specifically bought to use suppressed. So, for a little bit of history, um, not just on the gun, but how I chose this gun. You know, I've tried, I had a Ruger Mark II for a number of years. It's a good gun. I liked the gun. But, there's a, just a couple things I didn't like. One, it was pretty heavy. It was a full steel frame version, which definitely made it very steady to shoot. So good for target shooting. Not great to throw in a backpack to go hunting or um, backpacking. So, when I had a suppressor on order, I needed something with a threaded barrel that I could go ahead and put the suppressor on. With the Ruger Mark II 2245, etc. pistols, the serialized portion is the upper. So in order to get a threaded barrel, you have to actually replace the entire upper, which is the serialized part. You got to go through a dealer and they're usually pretty inexpensive. So I found for not much more money than the pack light or some of those really high, um, high end, nicer 22 uppers that I could get their new lightweight version for spending just a little bit more money. Another thing that I liked, so the, the Ruger Mark II kind of has a specific grip angle that some people like, some people don't like. I found that I was shooting pretty regularly a full size 1911. This is my Springfield TRP. It's one that I carry very regularly, shoot a lot at the range, and I was really interested in shooting something that had the same grip angle. So a little bit of research and I ended up on the Ruger 2245 Lite. So it's 22 long rifle. Um, it's supposed to come in um, about five and a half inches tall which is pretty much the same as the others and it comes with the threaded barrel. Now what it does to keep the weight down is it actually uses an aluminum upper and that aluminum upper has a uh, steel barrel inside of it. So the barrel that actually has the rifling is very thin and then you use the aluminum basically shroud over it to protect it. So this pistol with a suppressor on it is still significantly lighter than the 22 Mark II steel version that I had with the four inch barrel. So I can throw this, a lot of times I'll just put it in the Ruger case. Um, there's enough room in there for me to put the suppressor, the pistol, an extra magazine, and then I'll throw this whole bag or that whole pouch in my backpack when I go hunting or backpacking. I've even shot um, a snowshoe hare and a couple ptarmigan with it when I've been out hunting and I haven't been seeing elk or deer. So really nice that it's lightweight that's actually one of the main things uh, let me pull up so according to the website the pistol by itself is about 22.7 ounces and then you take factory specs for a silencer go specter 2 which is supposed to weigh in at about 6.8 ounces so with those together it's still lighter weight than the steel models uh, the other thing with the threading, it came from the factory that way. I have not had any problems with concentricity or any other issues like that, but that saves me some money and some time trying to figure out how to get a pistol with a threaded barrel. I looked at, you know, the Walther and the Ruger SR22 and some of those that work with an adapter, so they're pretty easy to get threaded. You just have to add on parts. Another thing that I really liked about the Ruger 2245 series and the Ruger pistols in general is that they're pretty common. So there's a lot of parts around either to replace factory parts or to add on aftermarket parts if you need to. So there's definitely no issues getting add-on parts. Um, in fact, I'll talk about that a little bit in one of the cons. Accuracy, you know, I'm not competition accurate with a handgun. I'm just not. 
So a lot of the 22s may have been uh, very similar as far as accuracy, the different models. For me personally, I this is more than accurate enough for me. It has adjustable rear sights so you can use a screwdriver to adjust up and down and then drift right and left for windage. Uh, so it's got those. It also came, they're probably going to be kind of hard to see here, but there's screws on the top. It actually came with a Picatinny rail that threads on to the top. So if you want to add a red dot or some kind of an optic to it, you can do that. I've even seen some guys, I haven't done it, but I've seen some guys that drill and tap the bottom and will add another Picatinny rail on the bottom so that they can mount a flashlight or a laser. Um, you know, it's a, it's only a 22, so you really don't have a tactical need for a red dot and a light and all of that. But if you just want to shoot with a red dot and a light and or a laser, you know, this 22 is inexpensive to shoot. You could have a lot of fun at the range with that setup. Um, and then, of course, being a 22 long rifle, that can be an advantage, especially now that it, you can finally find 22 ammo in stock again. But very, very low recoil. You know, I've used this to, sh to have um, a couple different women and my kids and a couple other people's kids kind of use this to introduce them to handgun shooting because with the 22 long rifle rounds and the fact that this handgun is so light, even with the suppressor on it, you get a package that is just very, very easy to shoot. So if you want to sit there at the range and do, you know, hundreds and hundreds of rounds or you want to introduce somebody to shooting, this is a great option. Inexpensive to shoot 22, even though the price has come up, it's still less expensive than most of your other centerfire options. And it's just, it's easy to shoot. It's a low recoil. If you want to introduce somebody to shooting a handgun, this is a great way to start. So um, another advantage with the shorter pistol barrel and a suppressor is I found that most of even the bulk pack ammo that's supposed to be supersonic is subsonic out of um, the shorter four inch barrel. Now, if you get some of the hyper velocity ammo, kind of like the Stinger, or some of those, those may go supersonic, but most of the bulk pack type ammo is gonna go, um, is gonna stay subsonic, which means even with the suppressor, you're gonna have that quieter effect. Um, and you know, and for the range, I went ahead and I've made myself a Kydex holster. So if I wanna use it hiking around or at the range. You can see the way I designed it, it actually sticks out just a little bit. So you can, if you're so inclined, you can thread it holstered with at least the Spectre 2 here. The suppressor is not much wider than the body of the gun. So it's kind of a tight fit but it will go in there and then obviously it's going to stick way down from your belt. So this is really not a convenient way to carry on your hip. Uh, but when I did do the, the holster here, I intentionally cut this down close enough to the gun that I would be able to get the suppressor through as well. All right, so let's go over a couple of what I thought were the disadvantages of this gun. Uh, several of them you can address, and I'll sh link to the video where I do it. But the first off is the heavy trigger. Now, um, I don't have in front of me what the trigger pull was prior to replacing the trigger, but it's a pretty heavy trigger. With and with a light gun and just a the fact that it's a 22, it didn't need to be that heavy. You know, for for plinking on the range, it's definitely beneficial to have a lighter trigger. So we'll go into that with another one, which is the magazine disconnect. So the way this gun comes from the factory is there's a magazine disconnect, which means when you pull the magazine out, it will not fire. Now, that's not a huge deal, you know, 
in a uh, defensive type handgun, that's not something that I want. In a range 22 or a hunting 22, it's not a huge deal. But what I found initially was with that uh, magazine disconnect in there, it actually impeded on the movement of the magazine, which made it just a little bit harder to get those magazines seated and made it so that they wouldn't drop free. So with that removed, you can see these magazines will actually go com almost completely out, even holding it level. So now for me, the, these magazines will drop free. So what I did is full quartz and make some really good replacement parts. You can replace the trigger and the hammer and um, the sear. And they make a kit that sells all of those. I'll link to that in the description. What I did is I didn't replace every part. I left the hammer alone. Um, so not qu exactly the same effect, but still most of the same effect. I went ahead and replaced the trigger. This one's adjustable for over travel. And I replaced the sear, which gives me the best option for um, lowering the actual trigger pull. And then I went ahead and removed the magazine disconnect. So what that gave me was a much, much lighter trigger pull. I mean, this is a very, very light trigger pull. And with that magazine disconnect, not only can it be fired, when the magazine is out, which again, for me, for this use is not a big deal, but it makes it so that the magazine doesn't get hung up when you're inserting it or more so when you try to eject it. Um, another couple things that I didn't really like. So one, a disadvantage of most of these style guns is you're limited to 10 rounds in a 22 magazine. Um, if you guys know of a 22 handgun that has high capacity magazines, let me know because I'm curious because I can't think of one offhand. They're pretty much all limited to 10 rounds. Maybe you can get 11 or 12 in there, but that's about it. The other thing that I don't like is these magazines are essentially the exact same magazine as the Ruger Mark II or Mark III with the previous grip angle. They just add a different bumper on the end, but that means when these go, these magazines go in, if you look at that angle, it's kind of hard to see there. I'll kind of overlay it approximately where it goes. If you look at the magazine angle, it's actually not going straight up the hand grip like a typical 45. It's still going in at the same angle that the um, non-2245 models go in. So to me, that just seems kind of a little wasteful. You know, you've got these this old magazine design instead of something that can come up a little more square to the hand grip design. So, and then with this big front bumper piece on here, I have found that if I'm wearing gloves or something like that, and I have my hand on the pistol, it tends to catch in the front here that where that piece overlaps if I have gloves or something with fabric on, which I don't shoot this at the range a lot with gloves unless the temperature is cold, um, but I've noticed that especially hunting if I need to do a, a magazine exchange for any reason that it tends to um, catch up. So those are kind of the main disadvantages that I don't like. So they're definitely, you can work through them. I think the 10 round issue and the magazine issue is just kind of the reality of working with the 22 you're going to have lower magazine capacity and you're kind of going to be stuck with whatever magazine they decide so i would definitely say if you're going to pick up this pistol you know you can shoot it how it is and it doesn't hurt to try it out see if you like it but i would definitely look into uh, replacing at the very least the trigger removing the magazine disconnect and replacing the sear. And again, I've got a video on where I did that. I'll link that so you can kind of see what that took. There's a number of other videos out there. But those would kind of be what I would do to it to bring it up to just much, much more enjoyable. You know, it's a fun gun to begin with, but then when you replace the trigger, get the trigger pulled down lower and remove that magazine 
disconnect. It definitely makes the gun more enjoyable to shoot. So this is the handgun that basically I've decided to shoot suppressed for a 22. I've absolutely enjoyed shooting it now for a couple years. So it's been kind of a, a slow, slow time getting a review out and I know there's a bunch of actual reviews out there where they go through all the specs but I just wanted to give you guys kind of a realistic review of uh, my impressions of this gun after shooting it for several years and shooting it almost entirely suppressed. So if you're looking for a suppressor host for a 22, I definitely think this should be towards the top of your list. Let me know in the comments below what you guys shoot as far as a suppressed 22 pistol. Curious what else you guys like. I certainly wouldn't be against adding more to the arsenal, but so far this is this is kind of my favorite. Um, just out on the table here, got one of the Outdoor Edge Razor Light EDC. Um, just picked this up. I'm gonna give it a try hunting this year. It's a replaceable blade pocket knife. You can easily exchange the blades or you can sharpen them they say. So I'm going to give that a shot hunting see if having those replacement blades for a quick sharp blade is convenient when we debone and quarter our elk this year. Alright guys that's it. Thanks for watching if you got any comments I try to respond to them as much as I can in the comment section below. If you've got anything specific you'd like to see with this gun, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching.